everybody. Hi. Hey guys. Welcome to another episode of Bizarre Buffet. Hi. 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 It's the That's hi. what we now say to everything. We're like, hi. 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 And it's funny because um, I've been saying that about everything for like the past like <laughs> few months and it's been pissing Mark off because I guess Paris Hilton had done something similar. She would say that's hot. Yeah. She'd be like, that's hot. But like But it I, wasn't like how you did like yeah. I didn't know she did that. No. <laughs> that's hot. Wait, how did she say it? She was just like that's hot. That's hot. That's hot. Oh. <laughs> that was good. Job. Mine's like Mine's just hot, but yeah. it's like you—you you really emphasize that. Oh, the, yeah. Hot. <laughs> it's kind of demeaning. Mm, it's it? like I'll be on Bumble, and it's like a non-attractive guy, and I'll show them, and Mark's like, "Ha!" <laughs> <laughs> or like I'll read like their profile, and it's like anti-vaxxer, Trump supporter. Uh-huh. Ha! <laughs> Swipe left, god damn it. Swipe left. <laughs> we have an in-studio guest with us. We have yeah. Gonk. We have our doggy. You can see part of him. He's if being you're well watching, behaved. If you're watching. His back's to the camera. And I'm drinking from my favorite cup, the Paradise Stream Passion Potion. That's Ooh. right. Which apparently... I don't know who told me, but I feel like you North Jersey folk. It's would like know one about of those that. hotels, like in the Poconos, with yeah. the heart shaped bed yeah. and the champagne yeah. glass yeah. pool, and where people bang. Yeah, Pretty that's much. where it's from. The Bang Hotel. Yeah, I you told got, you. Yeah, you. Oh, you did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that was me. That was. That was, that was you. I don't know. About yeah, that's that. a fucking thing, and it's still around too. We Is should it? go. We, we should just go, the three of us and gunk. If you, yes, that's right. If you want us to live record from the Bang Motel, let us know. <laughs> we'll do it in the little heart hot tub. Yes. Hot. hot. <laughs> or the champagne glass. Oh my. Yes, a million percent. Thousand times, yes. I think to get into it, there's like a little staircase thing that kind of like, like wraps that. around it. Like a spiral. Like, I don't know. Uh, I, no, I know what you mean. But I think it's something yeah, like that. Yeah, because it's so tall. How else would you get in there? Yeah. Right. Catapult yourself, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, guys, our topic today has nothing to do with heart-shaped hot tubs, unfortunately. Is it hot? Is it hot tubs? <laughs> no. It could be... <laughs> I don't know. Hot. <laughs> <laughs> If you have a fetish for bizarre things, this could be hot. Okay. Okay. Before we get into our topic, I just want to ask you guys what the most dangerous aspect is about your line of work. Like dangerous in a form that could potentially hurt or kill you. Kind of depends because I do multiple things, but Mark Bluestein go first. Well, I guess for me, um, because I work in the hair industry, there's a lot of chemicals that you inhale on the Mm -hmm. regular. Mm -hmm. And it's said that Jackie Onassis, I don't use Kennedy anymore. We don't do that. That's dated JFK. She's just Jackie O. That's right. Onassis, oil tycoon, baroness. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Anyway. As as the Edies look down on us. That's right. From the Bizarre Buffet headquarters, the Grey Gardens movie poster. If only we had multiple cameras to show Mm -hmm. it. But eventually, Patreon. I guess for me, like hair color, Mm -hmm. um, fumes from hairsprays, like, you know, long-term exposure to stuff like that isn't Mm -hmm. great for your health. So that would be one. Okay. Or I could, you know, accidentally trip and stab myself in the neck with scissors, but I'm not that clumsy. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes working in special education might demand you working with children who are aggressive or Mm -hmm. have anger management issues. So being bit, being scratched, being hit, hair pulled could be considered I guess deadly I mean yeah. knock on wood I haven't had to deal with that in years but also like working in theater and being on stage and being backstage you risk like lights falling if they're not properly screwed in Yeah, tripping over things backstage we have a huge warehouse with just like different set pieces and uh-huh. different like big chunks of wood and yeah you it's definitely a, it could be a hazard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it could be. And especially in theater, because, you know, sets are always moving. Exactly. Lights are always moving around. There's normally like a grid or something in the ceiling. And yeah, 
So I hear you. And then yoga, if you're like doing a headstand, which is something I never do, you can always risk snapping your neck or something. Oh. Well, you have way too many I have way things. too many jobs. I need to stop. Yeah, I need you to do. cut back. You need to cut back. If you think that I should cut back, do you should a comment. Yeah, comment. Yeah, do a survey. Below comment below. Instagram. And give to our Patreon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah thank, thank you. you. Right. I think oh, for me, man. like in my line of work, I you know work in luxury retail management. And right now it's fine jewelry. Choking on a diamond. Oh I could God, I could I literally totally choke to death that. on a diamond. <laughs> so in my industry, I think one thing that kind of puts us at risk is the possibility of getting held up in a situation. Oh my God, yeah. yeah. I've been exposed to, you know, in-store robberies before in a luxury setting. PETA. PETA, PETA protesters. PETA. I've seen PETA protesters. Yeah. And I don't mind PETA. I think they're a good time and I love animals. So... Keep on protesting. I guess I have to take back about education because you can deal with the risk of active shooters yeah. since that's apparently uh, a common thing yes. in today's society. That, yeah, good yeah. point. Absolutely. Well, I mean, yeah. I work I work at like, you know, a luxury mall that has like a Chanel oh my God, yes. on, and you know, there have been Mark and I just walked around last week. Yeah. We did. We went to visit Mark. And it was just <laughs> We did a lot of things. We did a lot of crazy things. Yeah. Patreon content. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Something that benefited the podcast. Exactly. There has been, you know, shootings at that specific mall. And there's mall. been shootings at malls in general. Yeah. Well, and there's been suicides at your mall. Yeah, there's been a lot yeah, of suicides. Yeah, remember we, we oh did, God. we got to see the place, the Victoria's Secret, that the girl threw herself over <laughs> the ledge. <laughs> Remember, Mark pointed that out I, yeah. to me. He's like, and here's the Victoria's like, Secret. And here on your left is the Victoria's Secret that recently went viral mm-hmm. for a racist woman yep. making a fucking scene and spectacle because she's an asshole. And I can I can literally give you a tour of that mall and show you every location where someone has died. Patreon content. Patreon content. Oh. Yeah. The reason why I am bringing this stuff up with like dangerous professions or something in your job that puts you at risk of an injury or death is because I want to tell the story of a woman named Violet Jessup. Has Uh, anyone ever heard of her? It sounds familiar. Not a clue. But I wouldn't... The name sounds familiar, but I wouldn't know anything about Violet Jessup. Okay. So Violet Jessup... I'll give you a little background about her, and then we'll get into what puts her into the bizarre buffet universe. For starters, she was born October 2nd in 1887. And you just keep taking us back. I know, and I don't give back, a damn about then, like back, anything baby. before. You've been taking us back, Because really? really? back, back, back. what I did, what nineteen sixteen for the Jaws. You attack. did, you did Taliesin. I did Taliesin murders, which is what like the tens. The tw- uh, was, 20s? Was that the 50s? Probably the no, 20s. it was the 10s or 20s. Oh. 10s or 20s. Once again, and geography now, and time. Uh-huh. And now I'm in like the late 1800s, but that's, hoop that's so weird. Hoop skirts. I guess I want to wear a hoop we skirt. We live for a hoop skirt, mama. I love a hoop skirt. So she was born in 1887 in Argentina. No, she was not wearing a hoop skirt when she was born. <laughs> Maybe her mom was. Could you imagine probably. a baby coming out like... Of yeah. a hoop skirt? In a hoop skirt. Oh. That's got to be painful. Yeah. Oh my God. I Talk about imagine. dilation. I Dial- know. <laughs> dilation of celebration. She needs to dial it down. Wow. <laughs> oh. 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 Cocktail's kicking in. <laughs> All right. So um, I'm going to have a sip of my cocktail. Yeah. Take a sip. We're all going to take a sip. If you're drinking, mm-hmm. take a sip with us. All right. So, um. It could be coffee, water, your favorite alcoholic beverage. Vodka. Right. You want some ASMR real quick? Yeah. So, okay. <laughs> Patreon. All right. So, Violet Jessup was born October 2nd, 1887 in Argentina. And she was the older daughter of Irish immigrant who actually gave birth to nine children. So, oh. she was the first of nine. I know. Oddly enough, out of the nine children in her family, she was one of six that survived living in these specific times. So three of her siblings had died. I don't know how, but everyone died back then. And very young, too. Yeah. Yeah. It's like if you were 30, you were like on your deathbed. Yeah. You were like 30. You were like shriveled up like a raisin. Yeah. Sad. So much of her childhood, she was caring for her younger siblings At a very early age, she had fallen ill to tuberculosis, 
and was told that she was going to die. Oh. But guess what? She lived. She didn't die. Yay. Yay, Violet Jessa. Yay. So already, like, at an early age, she kind of has things kind of going against her, and yet Well, yeah, it's like she's, like, kind of forced to grow up quickly, like, take care of her younger siblings. Yeah, six fucking... Maybe wearing a hoop skirt. We don't know. And has tuberculosis. (laughs) Listen, walk a mile in a hoop skirt in her shoes and hoop skirt, Okay. So later on in life, at the age of 16, her father passes away. The family ends up having to move to England where she started to attend a convent school. You know, while attending convent school, she took on the responsibility of taking care of her youngest sister while her mother was working at sea as a stewardess. Oh. Stewardess at sea. Yeah. Like on a cruise ship. On a cruise ship, ship. yeah. Or a commercial ship or a pirate ship or the the Mayflower. The Titanic. (laughs) Um, (laughs) You know, things like that. The Queen Queen Elizabeth. Yeah. Unfortunately, in the trend of events, her mother became ill and could no longer work. So Violet ended up leaving school. Thank God, because it was like convent school. Oh, my God. Bring a book. Bring a Bible. Bring a Bible. (laughs) Throw it out the window. But she she ended up following her mother's footsteps. She, too, became a stewardess at sea as well. One of the problems that she ran into, because she was very young at the time, she was very pretty. She was very attractive. Right. And at the time, the stewardesses at these, like, oceanic boat things are all like you know older women <laughs> oh. oh older times older women in hoop skirts oh, um, so she kind of had to like ugly herself down to get a Aww, spot Violet yeah. Jessa oh Violet so by the time she was 21 years old she finally earned her first stewardess position with the Royal Mail Line on board a ship called the Orinoco Orinoco. The Royal Mail Line? Like, did they actually transport mail or anything? Yeah. yeah. Well, okay. it's still to this day in the UK. Is it's that called the Royal called? Mail. Yeah. Oh. So the Royal Mail Line was a British shipping company it's that shipped mail. all over the world. Okay. Yeah. So she was on the Royal Mail. Yeah. So she got, she was line. employed through the Royal Mail. You know, it's funny because despite not wearing any makeup and trying to make herself look ugly, for work, it didn't stop her from receiving three marriage proposals while working as a stewardess. Mm. Wow. Maybe that's what I need to do is go become a stewardess. For her. Yeah, an ocean stewardess. I know. So now let's all get off of this Royal Mail jazz and talk about the RMS Olympic. So in 1911, she moved on to working as a stewardess on a ship called the RMS Olympic. The Armas Olympic was a luxury ship. It was, you know, at the time, the largest ocean liner that carried civilians. And on September 20th, 1911, the RMS Olympic had collided with a British warship called the HMS Hawk. Nobody died. Okay. But Violet was on it. But she was on it. The ship did not sink. It got fucked up, but it did not sink. And they were actually able to take this jacked up ship and safely, like drive it to port wow. somewhere. Okay. okay, interesting. Wow. In her memoirs, for some reason, she really chooses not to discuss the collision of those two ships, which is very unusual considering the nature of events that take place in her life after this. So we're going to fast forward a little bit and get a little more bizarre. Oh. The next ship that she gets a job on happens to be the RMS Titanic. <laughs> Oh, Jager! Oh, yeah. <laughs> she got her first 1912. Yes. It's been 87 years. It's, it's been 87 years. It's been 87. I can still smell the first diapers. The red paint. In the China. In the China. I so, love China. Yeah, so, okay. It's <laughs> the best line in the movie. Yeah, it is. We love, the, we love a good Titanic we movie. Like, yeah. We always reference Titanic. Yeah. Jim Cameron, you're not listening, yeah. but... Hi. Hi. Yeah. Hi, Jim. And Billy Zane, I Hi. follow you on Instagram. Hi. Hi. I do as well, and you have never responded to my drunken comments on your post. <laughs> <laughs> and I take issue with it. And Leonardo DiCaprio, 
you're hot. There you go. An iceberg. I want to hit yeah. that. <laughs> oh, good iceberg collision joke. Ooh. I like that. Actually, fun fact, Mark and I have a small piece of the Titanic. We do. Here. Really? With us. We do. Yeah. Okay. So when I was younger, I grew up in South Jersey and my closest beach was Atlantic City. There was the, the Titanic exhibition. That's right. At I the went Tropicana. to that too. I went to that too with my mom, my dad, and my aunt Sharon. But did you steal things from the Titanic? No, I exhibit? did not. I was not Mark. Mark Bluestein, I did not steal things from the Titanic. Did you well, steal? I, well, I mean, stolen is um, subjective. Yeah. So they, in the middle of this one room, they had a long piece of steel that they had unearthed. I, I think guess, it was like the hull of the ship or something mm-hmm. and it was suspended from the ceiling. Okay. Yeah. And they had it like roped off with like those red velvet ropes. Like you'll see all of a sort of restaurant yeah, or club or whatever. Like, this was like a pre 9-11 world. So it, yes, exactly. You so you yeah. could like, you know, face walk up to anything and take it. You could. You could face plant into a piece of the Titanic if you were clumsy enough. The only thing I remember from that exhibition is putting my hand on the ice to feel how cold the iceberg was oh. and throwing a fit that I would not see Jack Rose. I thought it was about the movie. I didn't think it was about the real Titanic. I feel like that is very real for like what you would think at that age. Like yeah. I feel like I would think the same thing. So I got it. So um, under this piece of the ship, they had sand because you know ocean theme. So in the sand, I noticed that there were a lot of broken off i mean essentially pieces of this piece of steel or steel i'm guessing it is it was like rusty steel that was kind of deteriorating okay. yeah yeah and making you took its way it. on the floor yeah because i looked around like so i'm doing it because there's a camera no one was around so i crawled my little chubby self under <laughs> those ropes baby I took my little pieces of Titanic and uh, we have them today, currently. Yeah, they are in a tin box that says RMS Titanic. <laughs> Which is unrelated. That, yeah. I don't know where I got that it from. Was, it, it was like an, it's like an Altoid box. Yeah. And, and then, now the FBI is going to come after yeah. you. <laughs> they kind of look like cornflakes, but, yeah, yeah. but like rust. Yeah. Okay. yeah, rust flakes. Rust flakes, yeah. Rust cornflakes. So we so. have like a small little piece, piece of the Titanic yeah. got it. in our yeah. home. Which makes it fitting for this episode to bring it, it up. It does. And maybe we'll um, raffle off a piece because there's a few flakes. So leave a comment. Let us know. If you share this episode and I have proof that you have shared it, okay? I want proof. I want reviews. I want subscribes. If you can. If you share this on social media, this episode, we will raffle off a piece of the Titanic and we, send I it swear to you. We have multiple we chunks have, of and it. And we have multiple, like fanatics yeah bizarre mm. buffet fanatics yeah so if you guys want to go on a mission and promote this show and you have to leave a boat emoji too yes a boat emoji so you have to share leave a comment mm-hmm. and write a boat emoji like in the comments like absolutely when so you we post, know so we know and i promise you personally because i took them myself you will get a piece deal does deal. it sound good? And we'll all sign off on it. Mark's like, I'm, I'm about, about to say over my goddamn dead body. I know, I know. <laughs> over my frozen, thawed Titanic body. Well, there's a couple of them. It might be a very small okay, piece. You'll get like the shitty piece. Yeah. Because okay. it's ours. And we still need proof. All right. Back to Violet. On the Titanic. So, I'm so excited. <laughs> so, yeah, I know. We love, a good, we love the Titanic. I know. We All love right, the Titanic. So we really do. About. We're like really obsessed with it. Imagine if Helen Keller went on the Titanic. Oh. <laughs> we would have a shit show. Oh, it would be terrible. Her screaming. All of us yeah. screaming. Nobody would help anybody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Violet ended up getting a gig on the Titanic. She boarded the RMS Titanic as a stewardess on April 10th, 1912, at the age of 24 years old. Four days later, on the 14th of April, as we all know... <laughs> The Titanic struck an iceberg in the northern Atlantic. It sunk in about two hours and 40 minutes after the collision with the iceberg. Now, fun little fact, the Titanic movie that we all know and love... Has nothing to do with the historic events. (laughs) It has nothing to do with this podcast episode, really, but the movie itself is three hours and 15 minutes long, where it took the Titanic 
less time to sink. So the duration of the movie is actually longer than the amount of time it took for the the well, boat to sink. Yeah, because there was a ridiculous love story that was yeah. fake. Yeah. But some of the like Kathy Bates' character was Molly Brown, who yeah. was a real character. The unsinkable. Like, there was some. Molly yeah. Brown. Yeah. And, and Macy's guy. And yeah. And Billy and Zane. Billy Zane. Who bored it with the women and children? <laughs> I would do that. So, <laughs> but I have a child. I have a child, please. That's the shit I would do. Well, I would probably put on a wig and pretend to be a woman. But didn't he put? It. Didn't he put a towel over his head and say he had a child? Yeah, I, I think, think he, he put he, it over the baby's head I, that he stole. But like he was stolen. Clear, like, they knew he was a man, and like the guy in the movie that led him on the lifeboat gave him like the. <laughs> I know oh, you're like, full of shit. Get on. You know, yeah. yeah that's get on. Basically, as we all know, the Titanic sinks due to the lack of urgency and the lack of lifeboats. There was 3,547 passengers, but only 18 lifeboats. And as a result, 1,517 lives were lost. So that's like half of the people on yeah. that ship died. So Violet happened to be part of the whole Titanic situation and she did escape and she got off on a lifeboat. Now, Violet references in her memoirs that she was ordered upon deck to basically serve as an example of how to behave for all of the non-English speakers that were on the ship. So through body language and through remaining calm, she was kind of like a presence on the ship as it was sinking to like tell people to fucking calm down, basically. Oh, yeah. wow. Like saying it without saying it. Yeah. You know? Like, hey, chill the fuck out, Mary. Yeah. And like if, you know, you were unable to speak English, she was assisting them either like onto the lifeboats or whatever needed to be done. Right. Trying to like translate like, okay, come with me. Yeah. Or... Yeah. So eventually she was placed on lifeboat number 16 and one of the officers actually gave her a baby to take onto the lifeboat with her. Oh, but I have a child. Oh, like, wow. And in certain Titanic movies, like there's so many of them, a lot of times they will make a reference to her, whether she's in like the background or something, but like her... Was she referenced in the... So, James Cameron film? Yes. She so, was. Yeah, in the movie, there's like someone that is like a stewardess that's like on the the deck of the ship while they're loading lifeboats and okay. that's supposed to be her interesting interesting yeah. i didn't know that mm -hmm. so yeah so she was placed on a lifeboat and the officers gave her a baby to like take care of and i guess the baby was like missing or dropped or who the hell knows obviously the ship titanic sinks and the next morning she with the rest of the survivors were rescued by the rms carpathia wasn't that the boat she was initially on? The Carpathia? Yeah, wasn't that one of the boats she was on? No, working she, she was on the RMS Olympic first. Okay. okay. And then after the Olympic, she went on to the Titanic. And okay. then Carpathia is like the rescue ship that okay. kind of got all the, the passengers. Like, Hong Kong. Yeah, I was like, hi. Who's ever alive? Um, while she was on the Carpathia attending to this baby, this random woman goes up to her and just snatches the baby <laughs> away from her. Problem solved. <laughs> <laughs> and basically like ran off crying hysterically. And the woman didn't say anything, not a hello, not a thank <laughs> you, not a that's my baby or anything. People are still like that today, I only, know. you know. No, yeah, they totally are, especially much, at, you know, Victoria's Secret. Yeah, much worse over a lot less. So that's like the second ship situation or shipwreck that she ended up surviving. Don't tell me she's on another. Yeah. Don't she, no. she ended oh, up on what? yet again another shipwreck. Just so you know, before I tell you guys about the third shipwreck, her nickname is the Queen of Shipwrecks. <laughs> <laughs> what a great name. Now, the third shipwreck that she was the queen of happens to be on the NMHS Britannic, which sounds like Titanic. 
So not allowing the past two shipwrecks that she encountered to kind of wreck her career <laughs> uh, and deter her from future employment opportunities. Yeah, working. She continued to just serve as a stewardess on these ocean liners. And I guess for her, her brain is probably like, oh, it's just the nature of the business. Well, like, yeah. I mean, you kind of have to. Nature of the business. I'm sure that's what yeah. flight attendants think all the time, too. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, you know. Plane crash is kind of final most of the time. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, on <laughs> on awful on November of 1916, she onboarded the HMHS Britannic, which happens to be the younger sister ship of the Titanic. Oh, oh sounds not, yeah. not a great omen. Yeah. Oh no. Mm. Uh, and this ship was converted into becoming a hospital ship while she was on board doing her job. I think she was like a stewardess slash like nurse type of person on this ship while she was on board the ship there was this unknown explosion that occurred the explosion caused the ship to sink in the aegean sea fun little fact a hundred years later in 2016 a major diving expedition determined that the britannic struck a deep sea mine and that's what caused this Ooh. unknown explosion it's a deep sea mine I guess it's a mine that explodes, but it's deep uh, in the sea. Oh, okay. I got you. Wow. Mm-hmm. So it's like a random... It's just weird that the ship happened to go right so over it. This... But did she survive the Britannic? Yes, she did. Okay, so this woman's life is constantly a game of Final Destination. Yeah, this woman is Holy like shit. shipwreck yeah. queen. Yeah. And uh, yeah, she's had multiple shipwreck experiences in her life. Now Major on, ones. Now on the Britannic, on this specific ship, there was 1,066 people on board. And this time, only 33 were killed. Okay. And Numbers are getting better. Numbers are getting better. But many conspiracy theorists started to say, you know, that the British were responsible for intentionally sinking their own ship so they could blame it on German forces. Because, like, that was around the time of World War One. Yeah. And I don't know too much about, like, history and wars and stuff and who's on whose side. The British and the Germans were enemies, not allies. Oh, I had no idea. No. I didn't attend much school. I didn't pay attention. It was the only subject I really cared about. As this ship was sinking, Violet Jessup and several other passengers were almost killed. Almost this one, killed? This one almost got her. Really? Yeah, she had a close, she had the closest call with death on this one. Not the Titanic. Not the Titanic. While she was trying to get onto the lifeboat, one of the ship's propellers were kind of sticking out. It was spinning and it was sucking the lifeboats under the ship. Oh. Underwater. Oh. So the lifeboat that she had gotten on was one of the lifeboats that got sucked up from the propeller and she had gotten her head hit very hard by that propeller to the point where she suffered a traumatic head injury. Once the ship actually sank into the ocean, she described the scene as basically it was so weird looking that it looked like a children's toy boat just fell into the ocean. Oh, that's fucking creepy. Yeah. <laughs> Being a working gal that she was She's and like, not letting oh, a shipwreck wreck her career. Nothing can sink me, baby. Yeah. She'd she, be more the un unsinkable Violet Jessa. Yeah, well. She went right back happens. to work in 1920 where she continued to work for her White Star Line. Oh, God, White Star Don't Line. Don't tell me she went into another fucking... No, no. She only had three shipwrecks God. under her belt, okay. under her hoop skirt. Oh, but um, under her hoop skirt. It's like the turn of the century, so I think we're now leaving the hoop skirts. Yeah. Oh, she might have pencil a pencil skirt now. Nice Maybe pencil a little, skirt. like a little flapper skirt. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Flapper or pencil. Yeah. So her remaining life, thankfully, the third shipwreck was the last shipwreck. And as we said earlier, she was nicknamed the queen of shipwrecks. The truth of the matter was, is that there was something dark or sinister about her. She was just an honest woman who found comfort and pride in a very specific industry. You know, she really wanted to live her life in the service of others, preferably at sea. And unfortunately, at that time, that industry seemed to be plagued with shipwrecks. Oh, no, yeah. <laughs> and still working out the kinks. Yeah. And, you know, she still managed to have a brief marriage later in life. And she retired in 1950. This is a weird story, but many years after the Titanic sinking, 
She claims that she received an anonymous phone call one stormy night, and the person on the other end of the phone was a woman, and she asked her if she had saved a baby the night that the Titanic sank. What? And she goes, well, yes, I actually did. And the person said, well, I'm that baby. (gasps) And then started laughing and hung up. Now, her friends and family thought that it could have been, like, a prank phone call or whatever. Mm -hmm. But she was like, there's no way anyone would have known. I kept it a secret. Because she didn't write about any of her shipwreck moments. Yeah, she... Either, really. I don't know, like, when she had her... What do they call it? What are those things called? When you write things down? Like, memoir? Memoir, thank you. Like, I don't know when she did her memoirs, but that's part of it. Basically, throughout her life, Jessup was also nicknamed Miss Unsingable, very similar to Molly Brown. Yeah. So I guess that boat had, like, these two unsingable broads that yeah. were <laughs> well. doing their thing. Unfortunately, even though the, she was on multiple shipwrecks that ended up sinking... Her heart sank in 1971, where she died of congestive heart failure at the age of 83 years old. She lived a long life. Yeah. Especially for that time period where, like, usually the lifespan was, like, 45. Oh, yeah, exactly. You know? So, I mean, that's the story of Violet Jessup, and it's just bizarre that... She survived three of these shipwrecks. Oh, yeah. And she seemed to have, like, a lot of these kind of things going against her. And she kind of outlived all of it. Yeah. I just think it's really weird. Like, what are the chances that you would be in a shipwreck three, three times? Three times, exactly. I, really. And, I mean, such famous ones, I guess, yeah. by all accounts. Or at exactly. least one real famous one. Yep. She's iconic. Yeah. That was a great story. That was story. a good story, Mark. Thank you. Yeah. It's like, this one's a little more heart warming yeah, yeah. Oh. we always like to pick the murder <laughs> i know we always go for like mark the... and i go for like the dark and yeah, twisted God. shit oh i know well you always you... find some heart in yours i know oh. that's so beautiful yeah that was really a sweet story that was really story. a sweet story and on brand I'm re- and I'm, so. I'm also like happy that like it didn't end traumatic like right that she died in and like and then a ship that was being constructed fell on her in like, the factory exactly. <laughs> like, you know? Yes. <laughs> Don't forget to share this episode yes, with a share. boat emoji so with you can be entered in for a drawing for a piece of the Titanic. That's right. And um, Mark will reluctantly relinquish the smallest a piece, piece of the Titanic. And it'll be a piece of the VHS movie. You have to also be <laughs> following <laughs> us. Yes. You have to also be following us on Instagram at Bizarre Buffet and yes. Facebook at Bizarre Buffet. And Facebook. All right, you so, have to tag us in either on Facebook or Instagram. Yeah. And this please, episode and, and put a boat emoji. And whatever, yeah, and a boat emoji. That is very important. And whatever you think is not enough sharing and subscribing and telling your friends and family, whatever you think isn't enough, okay, good. Do more. Do more yeah. of it. And then just, you know, send us something, let us know. All right. And you will be entered. And I promise you. You will get the smallest piece that we have, Mm. but you will get a piece. And it'll be signed by all three of us. That's right. And the smallest, like we would have to get a mouse to like dip his, like dip his like little um, little nail or tail. (laughs) Oh my God. Yeah. And ink to like do it, but like we'll figure it out. So logistic stuff. And just be generous and donate on Patreon. Yeah. So yeah, Bizarre Buffet on Instagram, Bizarre Buffet on Twitter, on YouTube, because now we're doing video for those of you who are Mm -hmm. looking at us while you're hearing this. Yeah. Facebook, yeah. Twitter, and I was gonna wear a high fashion outfit, but it's so fucking hot I know in it is this hot. room that yeah. I'm like, I'm not wearing leather. The coolest thing in this room is this table, yeah. and I would literally be naked on it if yeah. I could at this moment. So, Ooh. oh my god, okay. table well, farts. Yeah. With that being said, yeah. I'm the hoop skirt. Oh, wow. And um, with that being said, I am um, the purse that the unsinkable Molly Brown had in Titanic. And I'm the stepmother from the movie. Was she a stepmother? I was Rose's mom. Yeah. Who well, was like, she had bitch vibes. So yeah. Totally. I would, I'm yeah. a Rose's mom yeah. from the movie Titanic. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye.